Okay, so now let us move on to the tutorial. Okay, we will solve a bunch of problems. So, first is a concept question. Okay, so this concept question I have taken in two concept questions, both from BJ10. Okay, BJ10 has fabulous concept questions. Okay, I strongly urge you to go through those concept questions because once we go through them, we will get a reasonable feel for the problems. Now, what concept question this tells us is a 1000 Newton boulder B is resting on 200 Newton platform A. So, iska mass, uh, iska weight is 200 Newton, boulder ka weight is 1000 Newton. When truck C accelerate, okay, and this entire assembly goes over a frictionless and massless pulley, okay, both frictionless pulley and massless pulley, it goes over this, and now, okay, this truck to which it is attached, it, it starts accelerating, okay, in this direction with a constant acceleration. Now, we are asked that which of the following statements are true. So, let us examine these statements and just use simple logic. Okay, let us not write down too many equations, only we will write down equations okay, when we are at loss okay, to understand that like simple, simple intuition will not give us enough insights. Then and only then we will move on to writing any equations. So, let us think about it. First question, so first alternative, the tension in the cord connected to the truck is 300 Newton. Okay, so, this is 200 Newton, okay, this is 1000 Newton. So, the total weight okay, is 1200 and it is said that the tension in the cord connected to the truck is 200 Newton that clearly cannot be right. Okay. This clearly cannot be right. Second one, the tension in the cord connected to the truck is 1200 Newton. Now, that is we have to think that if the truck were, would have been stationary, okay, the truck would have been stationary, then this is 1000, this is 200 and then overall how much is it? It is 1200. Okay. But is this true or is it not true? Let us think about it. Okay. Now, what is happening? Okay, let me use the white board. This is the assembly of A and B. So, A plus B okay, is equal to the weight of them. is 1200 Newtons. There is some tension acting on it. This is the truck. There is some tension acting on it. Same tension will act on both of them and this has some acceleration. Okay. Now, note one thing that the acceleration of the truck by the constraint will be the same as the acceleration of this B and A together. Now, what we want to know is if this tension is equal to 1200, because the sum of the weights acting is 1200. But note one thing, because without doing a single equation, we realize that if this tension is equal to 1200, then this assembly cannot stay in, this assembly cannot accelerate. The only way this assembly can accelerate upwards, because this tension will then balance this and the overall force acting on this assembly in the vertical direction just becomes 0, so no acceleration. The only way it can have an acceleration upwards is if this tension exerts a force over and above this weight 1200. So, this tension has to be necessarily more than 1200 for this entire assembly to go upwards. So, what we can clearly say from here is that the that tension in the cord connected to the truck cannot be 1200. Next, the tension in the cord connected to the truck is greater than 1200, that is the right answer in that case, that because this is. Uh, because of the logic that we had just discussed. Second one, the normal force between A and B is 1000, is the second thing. Now, is that true? Okay, that between A and B, okay, let us look here. Let us, uh, oh. okay, so let us look at this. B diagram B. What do we have? B has some weight, okay, which is how much? Which is uh, 200. There is a normal reaction, okay, between A and B. We don't know what that is. 
but the same logic again this b is accelerating upwards okay with acceleration a so what will happen that if this normal reaction is same as 200 then this acceleration will be zero so in order to create an acceleration in the upward direction this normal reaction has to be over and above this 200 so nab has to be more than 200 and this is the same effect say for example if you are standing in an elevator and the elevator start accelerating upwards then we feel that for example we are pressing more against the ground means for example if you take a weighing scale okay and stand on it then we will see that the weighing scale will actually feel more normal reaction okay than our regular weight why because that extra acceleration okay it is over and above our weight and that in addition to the weight that we have this normal reaction okay should be more and above this 200 because if it is 200 no acceleration so only when this nab becomes more than 200 can we have some acceleration so i can say that this is something like the elevator effect okay and so the normal force between a and b is 1000 newton sorry i made a mistake here this is not 200 this is 1000 okay so the normal force between A and B cannot be 1000, it has to be more than 1000. And the last is the normal force between A and B is 1200. So that we cannot say how much it is, that completely depends on the acceleration. Okay? So we cannot say anything about E. So essentially, uh, what we can say here is that, that the only true statement here, that the tension in the cord connected to the truck is greater than 1200. Okay? So this simple concept question, okay, we immediately understand all concepts about free body diagrams and without explicitly solving any problem we get a reasonable understanding about all these qualitative statements that are made about this simple problem. Now let us come to the second concept question. Again the idea is not doing a detailed calculation but just analyzing it in brief details, okay? just brief details so that we get a feel about the problem. That we are not doing anything in great details but just to qualitatively understand what is happening here. So we have two systems shown starting from rest. This is 200 Newton, okay? on the left, okay? Okay. So, two uh, systems shown start from rest, on the left two 200 Newton weights are connected by an inextensible cords. So, these are 200 Newton weights, they are connected by an inextensible cord. On the right, a constant 200 Newton force pull on the cord. Okay. So, these are two systems, one is this 200, 200, 200, 200. Okay. And what we want to know is neglecting all the frictional forces, what are the following, are these following statements true? Okay or what are the what statements are true. Let us look at these statements one after one. Now note one thing, if this system is in equilibrium or not, let us ask ourselves. Neglecting all the frictions in the pulleys, this is 200, so the tension, if the system is at equilibrium, or if the system wants to be in equilibrium, this tension has to be 200. But because there is no friction between this and the bottom surface, any force acting here will start accelerating the block downwards. So what will be the tendency of this entire assembly? The tendency of this entire assembly will be to slide downwards. Look at this system, 200. It goes over the pulley. This 200 uh, Newton force acts on this. So this will have a tendency to slide it to the right. So both of these systems have the tendency to accelerate this downwards, this to the right and overall downwards. Now the question is that what statements are true? Block A and C, okay have the same acceleration that block A here and block C here have the same acceleration. Now let us analyze this situation. If this is 200, in this case we clearly see that the acceleration is downwards. Now since the acceleration is downwards, okay, if I draw the free body diagram for this bottom, bottom one, it's 200. This weight is 200 and this tension is T and this acceleration is happening downwards from whatever logic we have used, okay, we we'll clearly see that acceleration has to go only downwards. Now when acceleration is downwards, if T is equal to 200, then acceleration has to be 0. But because acceleration is downward, the effective force okay, has to act in the downward direction, so the weight has to be more than tension, so tension clearly in the first case is less than 200. Okay. Now what happens? Because the tension clearly is less than 200, this acceleration depends only on the tension. Okay, because the tension is the only horizontal force acting on it. So mass times acceleration is equal to the tension. So here the acceleration, the tension is 200, here the tension is less than 200 and as a result block A and C will have the same acceleration is not right. Block C will have a larger acceleration than block A is right. Why? Because this will be 200 but here the tension acting here will be less than 200. 
third block A will have a larger license in block C is wrong. Block A will not move. Again, from the logic that we have used, block A has to move. None of the above is again wrong. So the only right statement here is that, that block C will have a larger acceleration than block A, clearly because the tension here is smaller than the tension here. And that is the only force acting on block A and C, which are of the same masses in the horizontal direction. Okay, so these two are two simple concept questions. Okay, now let us solve problem number one. The two blocks are shown to be originally at rest. Neglecting the masses of the pulleys, okay, neglect the mass of the pulleys and the effect of the friction in the pulleys and between block A and the horizontal surface. Okay. So, no friction here, no friction involved here, no friction involved here. Okay. Masses are negligible. Okay. Determine the acceleration of block A and acceleration of block B and the tension in the cable. Okay. So, tension here, tension here and tension here. Okay. So, let us solve this problem for the next uh, 5 to 10 minutes okay. and we will discuss if you have any questions send them my way okay on the chat i will try to answer them there okay so this problem okay really straightforward problem so just note here is i can draw a free body diagram for this and this so let us if i use the white board for this mass on the top no friction only force acts is the tension because all the friction pulleys are frictionless w n and this is equal to m a for the top mass. For the bottom mass, what are the forces that act? The forces acting are these two forces okay, and this force. And we neglect the mass of the pulley here. But we can as well write a draw free body diagram like this. We can as well draw T, 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 T. This is weight okay, acting downwards. And what do we know? That this should be equal to. m1 a1 this should be equal to m2 a2 done now these are two simple equations we can write okay this weight this weight is given so there are one unknown is tension okay this is a1 and this is a2 so tension is one unknown a1 is other unknown a2 is other unknown how many equations we have we have one equation here sigma f in this direction is equal to m1 a1 here we have the equation sigma f in the y direction is equal to m2 a2. So we have two equations and three unknowns. So how do we take care of that? We realize that the length of the string should remain constant. So what is the length of the string? This is x is x1 plus okay. We can just write down these two quantities y y1 plus y1 plus uh, uh, y plus y plus y and these two are two constant lengths okay so we have x1 plus 3 y1 is the length or we can say that x1 double dot plus 3 y1 double dot is equal to 0 or a1 which is the acceleration of the top mass plus 3 acceleration of the bottom mass is equal to 0 and we can immediately find out what are the 3 equations, 3 unknowns we can solve for them. Now there is one variation that one person asked a question is that what if there were additional okay. So these are this is just one string and because this is one string I can write a relation between them. Now suppose instead of having one string we had something like this. Okay. One more string has to be added suppose. So we can say I add another string here. Then what happens? Just note that if I had another string here, then this problem is fully constrained. It's 
not a mechanism okay not a mechanism at all so we have to use ideas from static equilibrium that we had done before in order to solve this problem okay so this is uh, problem number 1 so why don't you have a go at i had already told uh, that who have finished problem number 1 to go for problem number 2 okay there are a and b parts okay the same problem okay there are two different parts of it have a go at problem number 2 and you can go for problem number 2 b also this is little bit of a difficult problem problem 3 okay you have to do some thinking if you are if you want to be challenged go for this problem and later we will solve problem 4 problem 5 and problem 6 are also there okay so just have a have a go at problem number 2a and when you are done with problem number 2a solve problem 2a go for problem number 4 after this solve problem number 4 problem 2a then solve problem 4 so in problem 2a okay let us briefly discuss this a 3 kg collar rest on the frictionless arm a in in case you have finished this problem go on to other problems go to problem 4 if you have done problem 4 go to problem uh, 6 and 7 in case you have finished everything go to problem number 3 the 3 kg collar b okay so this is a collar rest on the frictionless arm a okay so this is a frictionless arm the collar is held in place by the rope attached to the drum okay so the collar is held in place attached to the drum and rotates about o so this is the point about which the rotation happens in the horizontal plane the linear velocity of the collar b okay the linear velocity uh, the linear velocity of the collar b is increase okay according to v is equal to 0.2 t square where v is in meter per second okay and t is in second so find the tension in the rope and the force in the bar on the collar after 4 seconds if this r is equal to 0.4 meters okay so as straight forward so what we have to do is that we have to draw the free body diagram and the kinetic diagram for the collar equations of motion for the collar and kinematics of the collar so we have to combine all these things together and solve so first is this okay we are given that v is equal to 0.2 t square r is equal to 0.4 meter so how what are the forces that act on the collar in this collar one force is the tension other force is the normal reaction that the rod exerts on the collar Okay. So, this is the normal direction that we have chosen because this is moving in a circle okay. we choose that this is the normal uh, that this is the tangential direction this is the normal direction as expected. What are the forces that act the tension here and the normal reaction from here now what do we know that Newton's laws tell us that this normal reaction should be equal to m a t and this tension should be equal to m a n okay. straight forward that f n is equal to uh, a n f t is equal to m a t now n will be equal to m into v square by rho v is the velocity here what is that velocity the velocity in the tangential direction rho is the radius of curvature which here clearly is r and what is the this uh, tension uh, t okay m dv by dt y because we are looking at at is what at is the acceleration in the tangential direction now what is the acceleration in the tangential direction clearly uh, dv by dt because this v that is given to us is the velocity in the tangential direction so this tension should be equal to m dv by dt so ultimately what do we want we want to find out tangential velocity okay tang uh, normal acceleration and tangential acceleration so what is the tangential velocity ka expression it is given to us that the tangential velocity at any instant is 0.2 t square so this is given to us so after 5 seconds what we are asked is that that find the tension in the rope and the force in the of the bar on the collar after 5 seconds if r is equal to 0.4 meters so we are given that uh, after 5 seconds what happens so the tangential velocity is 0.t t square straight away put the numbers will come out to be 5 meter per second what is the acceleration in the normal direction okay the acceleration in the normal direction okay what is the normal direction this along the along the center of the radius uh, along the center of the circle uh, 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 so which the which this mass traverses so acceleration is given by v square by rho comes out to be 62.5 meter per second square and what is the tangential acceleration is nothing but dv by dt okay simple just this is the speed tangential speed so dv by dt will be the tangential acceleration so what we have done is that 
that we have used the the path coordinates in this case we have we have used the tangential coordinate and the normal coordinate found out what is the velocity in the tangential coordinate it is given we take the appropriate derivatives we find out the acceleration in the tangential direction and correspondingly using v square by r we found out what is the acceleration in the normal direction so substitute in the equations of motion what do we see that sum of all forces in the normal direction what is that the only force here is this tension t should be equal to m a n a n we have already found out so we can find out what is the tension sigma ft is equal to m a t so we can find out okay so just know that this is there is there is a confusion here okay so this this should be t okay just uh, so there is a mistake in this slide so this sum of all the forces in the normal direction is t here okay so this n should be replaced by t and here okay the confusion came because t capital t is for tension whereas small t is for tangent and capital n is for the normal reaction and small n is for the uh, normal component of the acceleration and so this n got replaced here this t got replaced here so this is not n or the normal reaction this is the t tension because that is the one which is contributing to the acceleration in this direction along the normal direction and this is n which is the force which is contributing to acceleration in the tangential direction and we can find out what these forces and acceleration are okay so this is t and this is n okay please note that and then the second part of the question is how would the motion change so this is happening in the horizontal plane the second part of the question is how would the problem change if the motion was in the vertical plane the only way it will change is that that we also need to apply an mg component here and so the mg will have one component along the t direction mg will have another component in the n direction and we have to just proceed with that okay are there any questions on that okay so everyone is okay now let us move on to problem number 4 okay so very simple problem what is asked is that that a small ball of mass m is supported okay by a wire here okay a vertical a wire in the inclined direction and a cord in the horizontal direction okay this entire assembly is in equilibrium now suddenly this cord is cut and what we are asked to find out is the determine the ratio k of the tension in the wire immediately after the cord is cut to that in the wire before the cord is cut this is the wire this is the mass this is mg or the weight and when the horizontal cord was attached it will exert okay some force f okay and this is the angle theta now when we want we first want to find out tension 1 before the cord is cut and tension 1 we can easily find out what because this is in equilibrium so if we take equation of equilibrium in the vertical direction then what do we have we have t1 cos theta is equal to mg so t1 will be equal to mg by cos theta now if we cut this wire then what happens we get a situation like this let us say this is t2 this is theta this is mg now let us use the path coordinates this is the tangential direction this is the normal direction now what we realize is that here this angle is theta so mg sin theta should be equal to m acceleration in the tangential direction straight away okay why because mg sin theta is the only force acting on this body in this tangential direction whereas along the normal direction what do we have we have t2 okay minus mg cos theta should be equal to v square divided by rho where rho is the length of this wire but since in this position okay when you immediately cut it the velocity is zero this has to be equal to zero so what will we get we will get t2 is equal to mg cos theta 
and then T1 by T2 or T2 by T1 if you do it that is the ratio k that is asked of us that is nothing but cos square of theta. So, note one thing that the tension okay, cos theta is always less than 1. So, the tension suddenly decreases and which makes sense that the tension what it is doing it is preventing the body from moving out. Okay. So, keeping the body in equilibrium and the moment you cut this cord okay, then the system no longer has to be in equilibrium and there is a sudden jump in tension because it can have an acceleration now in this direction which was previously not allowed and the tension was balancing this component of the acceleration and some part was balanced by this. So, the tension immediately jumps after you cut it and T2 by T1 sorry the tension immediately uh, decreases after you cut and T2 by T1 will come out to be cos square theta. Okay. So, there are a couple of questions okay, let me answer them before we move on to the quiz. Okay. So, it is by center 1, 2, 3, 4 they ask that if there is no gravity then do we how we tackle the problem. Okay. So, that is what we discussed right that in, in problem number 2a that the arm was rotating in the horizontal plane. So, this is the drum, okay. this was the sleeve and this entire assembly was rotating about point O, this is x, this is y and then what did we see is that, that if this is a horizontal plane then the gravity acts inside the plane of this paper. Okay. So, if you again look from the z x plane you will see that this is point O, this is the drum, this is the rod, this is the sleeve, okay. this is the tension wire connecting them and this is gravity. But as we had seen earlier because the rod cannot go downwards because, because the sleeve cannot go downwards because of the presence of this rod there is no acceleration in the downward direction. So, gravity is not doing anything interesting, but on the other hand if we put it in such a way that gravity acts in this direction then the only change that happens is that that we had a tension acting on it from the wire connecting the drum and the sleeve and the rod and the sleeve there was a normal reaction that acted from the rod to the sleeve. In addition we will also have mg here, nothing will change only thing that will happen is that we can resolve this mg into two components one like this and one like this and while writing out m a n equal to f n and m a t is equal to f t, this normal force will also have a component coming from the gravity and this tension will also have a this tangential force will have a component from tension as well as gravity and accordingly the normal force and the tension will be modified. Okay. That will be the only difference that will happen if the gravity also acts on it in the, in the sense that the rod is not rotating in the horizontal plane, but in the vertical plane.